Call the meeting of the whole to order. We have section 2024, with the flag salute. But the United States of America, and the Mrs. Hoover? Here. Mrs. Krug? Here. Dr. Krug? Here. Mr. Krumenacher? Here. Mrs. Krumenacher? Here. Mrs. Lieb? Here. Mr. Schill? Mr. Basil? Here. Ms. Sinchoff? Here. Okay, are there any guests or papers signed up? Okay. All right, so uh, the only one signed up today is Diane. Diane, please state your name and your address. Okay. Okay, my name is Diane Weismanski. I'm from Municipal Road, North of Cambria, Susquehanna Township. I've been here before. Um, just lost my page. The reason I'm, I'm speaking is I printed the agenda and I found under community relations, the library donation, discussed the donation to the library for this year. When I come to meetings, I feel like the elephant in the room. Um, I know Reverend Marty was here at the March board meeting and did a presentation on everything the library did for folks during COVID. I, when I saw that the reading team had placed second, I put my congratulations. I tried to be uniform. I try to congratulate all the kids, all the teams, all the people that do things on Facebook. Um, so I did that. And then, you know, it became obvious that I knew things from way prior to COVID. In 19, and I don't know the exact year, and I didn't feel like trying to figure it out any more than I did. In like 1987, 88, Paulette Brawley organized the first reading team at the high school when it first started through the IU-8. And because of my position in the district, she asked me to be the reading team coach in the middle school. And between us, we had at least 60 kids involved in the reading team in those early days. And yes, unlike that, yes, we were volunteers and yes, we had no budget. And the only thing we really got for free was a bus to go to the competition. And kids were signing up. We, I actually had to have a lottery one time, pulling names out of a hat to fill a team because there were so many kids that wanted on the reading team. And our success was extraordinary. First place, we even got grand prize, like the best first place of all the first place places that you could get. I mean, in these three and a half so decades, we have done extremely well. In the very beginning though, if it had not been for the public library in Spangler and in Barnesboro, we would have never survived. We had no budget. And if the books on the list weren't in our library, we had no place to get them. The librarians at both libraries were so wonderful, they would get our list and find the books that they had in the library. And then they would start getting them from the libraries in the county. And you know they did it through the state even for something that we really needed and couldn't find. And when I took them, there was no return in two weeks. They just signed them out to me and said, when the competition's over, bring them back. And thanks to all of their cooperation, and they just didn't do that one time. We did reading team twice a year, and we did it, and I did it for years until I was off of maternity leave in 1992. So, I mean, it was like 10 years worth of that effort. And it continued that they constantly, they would call me at home and say, you didn't bring the list out, what do you need? And they were so wonderful. And so when Reverend Marty was here and spoke on behalf of the library for a stipend, that's just one little thing. Last year, I worked on the commemoration of the Riley Shaft 100 years anniversary. And we used the community room there at the library. And there were story hour and there was sewing classes and there was people there all the time. So I'm here. I don't see Reverend Marty tonight, but I am here to voice my unanimous support for the library and anything the school district can do 
because they do so many things that don't make headlines. Like you folks probably never knew that, you know, like those po folks had my fast dial number for like 10 years <laughs> to get us books for the reading team. And our success was proven over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So I want to just say that. And I feel like, like I said, I feel like the elephant in the room because, you know, I, I know the history. I was here, I was in this building since 1975 till I retired. So thank you. I will hope you would consider supporting the library. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go into administrative report, superintendent. Thank you. Uh, so several things this evening. Um, I do have a school that's interested in purchasing the bleachers from the middle school gym. So we'll talk a little bit more in executive session. Uh, about what we can do with that. We received one of our grants from PCCD for $30,000. And that's going to be for better communication devices for evacuation and salary costs for security at our extracurricular events. Swimming classes are starting April 6th through May 18th. We have 15 students that are taking advantage of that. We have one on a waiting list. So we're pretty excited about that. I applied for another fresh fruit and vegetable grant for next school year. Uh, the kids have been enjoying that and Kristen has been helping quite a bit with, uh, with this year's grant. And uh, at the beginning of May and in August, May 1st at 7 p.m., I'm going to have a school hall meeting for parents where they can come and we can discuss issues. Uh, one of the things that I wanna discuss with them is clear backpacks for the following school year. Uh, swimming classes, we'll talk about construction over the summer, just so parents have an understanding of what's going on. So the first meeting will be May 1st in this auditorium, 7 p.m. And then we will hold another school hall meeting August 7th uh, at 7 p.m. here. And finally, for my uh, presentation today, I wanted to uh, help educate the board members about uh, guidance counselor. So um, I'm asking that we grow one of our own teachers as a guidance counselor. And I wanted to show why that is so important. So I asked for some statistics from uh, guidance counselors and also from our social worker. So this was something that I shared with you a couple months ago about the state of education. This was from the Pennsylvania School Board Association. And this is the survey of all the school districts, the 501 school districts in the state, and what their big, biggest challenges were this year. And as you can see, student mental health needs, and then a, a second would be staffing shortages. So those are the two things that all school districts are struggling with, and those are our biggest challenges. So I wanted to share some statistics with you. So this was in January. Our SAP team is our student assistance program. Um, we had 13 referrals halfway through the school year, middle school 16 and high school 24 referrals. Partial hospitalization or students that were hospitalized due to mental health. The elementary, we have two. Middle school, we have four. High school, we have one. And we just had another one uh, within this last month. And again, this is not any different than any other school district. This is a trend that we're seeing across the state. Ambulance calls related to mental health needs. Middle school, three. High school, two. In my career, typically, you were lucky to have one in two or three years. We're having this many just in half a school year. Threat assessments. And this was a team that I put together when I got here. We did not have a threat assessment team. And what we do is we take seriously any students that make any type of threats. So we look at very, everything very closely. We have questionnaires that we go through to determine if those indeed are a threat. Elementary, we've had eight so far this year, middle school five, high school one. These are very time consuming. These take days 
to complete and several people to complete. <laughs> Students requesting to see a counselor, we, we currently are sharing a counselor between the middle school and high school, and it's not working. As you can see, in November, we had 83 students that requested to see a counselor. That's very difficult sharing that counselor with the high school and the middle school. Child line referrals. Five in the elementary, middle 19, high school two. Police investigations, four at the high school, three at the middle school, one at the elementary. Again, we are not different than any other school. This is what schools are experiencing statewide. Backpack program, number of students that have food insecurity. Homeless students. This one surprised me, the number of homeless students that we are dealing with. Again, in my career, I've never seen numbers this high. This is what the social worker's been working on. This was as of January. Homeless students, truancy elimination plans, routine visits, IEP, emergency calls to handle behaviors, meetings with community and school-based teams to meet student needs. Guidance counselors. Check in, check outs. Our middle school guidance counselor can't do as much of that now because she's being stretched at the high school. They also have classes, individual students seen on a regular basis, groups seen on a regular basis. None of this includes the counselors that we have coming in. This is just our staff and what we're expecting our staff to do. <laughs> So I'm hoping that by showing you these statistics that you understand our need for another guidance counselor. And I hope the board will support that as we move forward. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. And principals, uh, elementary. So I'm going to speak for Dr. Tibbet um, first and then I'll do something. So in the elementary school each year, Chelsea Brady has the students in her ELA classes write letters to inspirational people of their choosing. This helps them learn the writing process, how to write a letter, and gives them a fun and exciting writing experience. Ms. Brady and her students are excited to report that they received a letter back. This letter came from Robert Ballard, who discovered the Titanic. In previous years, they have heard back from President Obama. And this year, Ms. Brady's students wanted to share that they have learned a lot from the experience and it is exciting to hear back from influential people. Uh, Dr. Pivot would like to congratulate the March students of the month in kindergarten, Renly Sheasley, first grade, Nicholas Ebbs, second grade, Autumn Shonsky, third grade, Riley Yamrick, and fourth grade, Jack McComey. Keep up the great work. Students in the elementary got to enjoy an Easter themed PBI, PBIS event last week. Special thanks to Mrs. Slavitt, Mrs. Blaney, and Mrs. Sherry for planning it. I'd also like to thank Mrs. Chelsea Daisley for bringing her high school students from the National Honor Society down to assist with the activity. The elementary students absolutely loved interacting with the high school students. The Blind Association will be doing an eye safety presentation with our kindergarten students on Thursday, and she would like to thank them for their time. Special thanks to the PTO. They will be bringing a reptile assembly to the elementary and middle school students on Friday. They are also sponsoring an elementary family dance on Friday night from 6 to 8 o'clock. In the elementary and middle school, we had a shared mental wellness fair last March, last Thursday, two Thursdays ago, March 21st. Um, we express our sincere gratitude to the 25 presenters that helped make the event a success. We had the trauma team sponsor the event just to share that the um, Trauma team does assist our staff with some activities like this. Mm -hmm. It was very humbling to see the number of community members willing to support the student body and staff. Students moved from room to room every half hour and had the opportunity to learn realistic outlets to help them relieve their stress. Um, the pre presenters brought a variety of ideas such as yoga, art therapy, music therapy, mindfulness practices, breathing techniques, cardio pound, feelings activities, aromatherapy, Tapping, a photo booth, and last but not least, therapy dogs. 
the highlight of the day. <laughs> and for the, adult, the adults to enjoy, we also had a mobile salt tent and a professional massage therapist. All of these presenters volunteered their time for us, and we cannot thank them enough. In the middle school, a um, couple of exciting things that happened in March. Mrs. Sherry wanted me to share that her fifth grade math students participated in a pie day challenge on March 14th. She had a variety of activities for them to do, um, but the final challenge was to study the first 100 digits of pi over a two minute time period. They then had to write down as many numbers as they could remember, digits I should say. They had to at least give the first three. Three of the students were successfully able to complete all of the given challenges, and those students were Henry Wolf, Mackenzie Hanyoff, and Dylan Covey. But one student had the first 44 digits memorized. Blowing the, sec blowing the second place memorizer out of the water, the next closest was 21 digits. So big congratulations to Kylie Cruzian for that. I would like to give out a shout out to uh, Mr. Shooty for organizing the first ever powerlifting event on March 23rd at the middle school. Although it really was high school students, um, Mr. Shooty does so much in the middle school and for everybody. So I just wanted to tell you guys how proud we are of him. He had 107 lifters from seven different schools participate. So that was pretty cool to get our name out there. Many staff members and teachers also assisted Mr. Shuby in making this a successful event. Our students of the month for March in the middle school were fifth grade, Braden Camerer, sixth grade, Bella Scanlon, seventh grade, Paisley Bradford, and eighth grade, Kingston Swanson. And finally, we're very excited for our upcoming recognition of the solar eclipse on Monday, April 8th. Our eighth grade science teacher, Amber Doherty, has been busy organizing the event through sharing video links and fact sheets with the teachers, as well as ordering our solar safety glasses for the students and staff. So the middle school and the elementary school are all very excited to be part of that. So it's not like pulling me on something fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I figured you'd have it in your own report. Yeah. Thank you. High school. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Our high school students of the month for March are senior Dawson Shuki, junior Sarah Abel, sophomore Julie Dunn, and freshman Alexander Patterson. <laughs> the High School Trauma Skills Schools team began a Caught Being Kind positive reinforcement initiative that rewards students who go above and beyond to show kindness to others. Any teacher who catches a student in a sincere act of kindness will give the student a certificate with their name and kind deed on it. Students then show Mrs. Chonko and are awarded a fast pass to lunch. So far, five students have been awarded Caught Being Kind certificates, and it does can be spreading more positivity around the school. And the fast passes to lunch are free, and they love them, so that works for all of us. Our student course catalog is complete. Mrs. Tenerovich and Mrs. Priebus have been working hard on tweaking some of the courses that will be offered for the 24-25 school year. Mrs. Tenerovich will be going into classes soon to start scheduling. Today, we met with Mrs. Norma Cruz to talk about our changes. On Friday, March 15th, Mrs. Prebish and some of our high school teachers and staff toured Martin Baker America. Martin Baker America is our new challenge program sponsor. Our new partnership will help provide educational and job opportunities for our students. Thank you to Bob Semmelsberger, who is a former NC graduate, who led our tour and reached out to create this partnership for our school. Our KidWin team competed on March 27th at Penn State University for the KidWin State competition, and they took second place in the state. The team consists of Mikey Kanitsky, Ethan Lickendorfer, Jackson Shreddy, and Ethan Donatelli. Matt Klein led this team. Congratulations to all. And I'm going to add, they were not happy about getting second place. I can tell you that. They were defending their first place championship. Um, the Heritage Conference Battle Block competition is Friday, April 5th at United High School. And this team is also led by Matt Klein. And we're hoping that we do better this year. They're improving, and we've got a lot of interest generated in Battle Block this year. Our Pennsylvania CSA State competition is April 17th to the 20th, and this team is led by Matt and Sarah Klein and will compete at Seven Springs. Our foreign travel club is currently in Europe on the Amsterdam to Paris tour. They are under the direction of Dean Amico, and several families are traveling with their Northern Cambria High School students. Our spring musical begins on Thursday, April 11th. The show runs Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The musical is Hands on a Hard Body and is on the, under the direction of Mr. Tim Jacobs with Jenny Fox as the musical director. This year's musical is about 10 contestants who are vying for a hard body truck in Longview, Texas. The last contestant who has his or her hands in the truck wins it. There are some new high school faces making their musical debut on the show, so please come out and support our students. Our contemporary issues class under the direction of Sarah Klein have their annual trip to the Cambria County Courthouse and the Cambria County Prison last week. This is such a great experience for our students. 
I look forward every year to hearing about their adventures. They get to they get the opportunity to tour the courthouse, meet county judges, watch live trials, and see the prison in operation. And they always come back with some very interesting, eye-opening stories. National History Day is at IUP on Friday, April 5th. The National or the Northern Cambria High School students will be competing in this event under the direction of Sarah Klein. On Thursday, April 4th, the AP government students will attend the first annual Democracy Bowl at the University of Pittsburgh, Johnstown. This is UPJ's event in which they plan and work with local educators to promote civics education in schools. Northern Cambria will compete in the trivia competition portion of the day and have been studying various topics such as Supreme Court cases, foundational U.S. documents, basic civics knowledge, as well as various historical topics such as the Civil Rights Movement. Students will have the opportunity to work and meet students from other schools and can have a campus tour. Senator Wayne Langenholz will be the keynote speaker at the event, and this event is under the direction of Kylie Dillon. On March 8th, L. Giardo of Lincoln Investment came and talked to Chelsea Foy's consumer finance and home and personal finance classes about the importance of saving for retirement and how starting early with even putting a small amount away each month will give you money upon retirement than if you started later. This all works because of compounded interest. interest. He also talked to the students about credit card debt. The National Honor Society helped the elementary students, and that's what Mrs. Gibbons was talking about, on their spring Easter theme games last week. And my high school students had as good a time as the elementary students. The National Honor Society also sponsored the Spring Blood Drive on Monday, March 25th. 33 people attended to donate, and we were able to collect 19 units of blood. Our baseball team traveled to Myrtle Beach to participate in the Cal Ripken experience in March. Our baseball, softball, and track teams have all had games and meets this past month and have been working around the ever-changing spring weather in Pennsylvania. We have many dual sport athletes this season as well. On March 20th, our high school reading team competed at the spring reading competition at Forest Hills High School. The team placed second out of 14 teams. Mrs. Michelle Hudak is the advisor. On March 27th, several of our support students under the direction of Mrs. Hudak had the opportunity to tour the Hiram G. Andrews Center and participate in a job shadowing event. We held SATs on March 21st and 23 students tested at the high school. The high school band and chorus held their Music in Schools Month concert on Wednesday, March 20th, and the Northern Cambria Band has some upcoming concerts. On May 5th, the Alumni Reunion Concert, on May 8th, the Middle School Band and Chorus Concert. On May 9th, the Chorus and Jazz Band Concert. And on May 15th, High School Band and Fourth Grade Concert. On Monday, April 22nd, Mr. P.J. Shell will be at Northern Canberra High School to present Mavs Voice. Mavs Voice is an educational program to discuss the story and how important it is to promote change and kindness within schools, organizations, and communities. All students attending the assembly during the school day will need to have a signed parent permission slip. If families prefer to attend with their child, there will be a second presentation for the school community that evening at the high school auditorium beginning at 6.30 p.m. that they can attend with their child. And thank you, Mr. Shell, for sharing this with us. Lastly, and I know this was long, I want to thank the board for sending me to launching leadership principal training this year. It began last July. I traveled to State College. It's continued through the year with monthly Zoom meetings, and it culminated last week. This incredible opportunity connected me with other new principals across the state, as well as seasoned, retired principals and superintendents who are employed as regional service specialists in the east, central, and western parts of Pennsylvania. We developed school leader entry plans, completed problems of practice plans unique to our districts, and covered a myriad of topics from school leadership paradigm to building relationships to school culture to time management. This training provided me with 40 Pennsylvania-inspired leadership credits, which are also known as PILs, and those are necessary for principals under PDE. This was a tremendous learning opportunity, and I thank you all for sending me. Thank you. <clears throat> Business manager. He's at a conference <clears throat> this evening. Okay, cafeteria. I, I won't be as long as we Sorry, it just kept going. This month um, for April, we will be um, working with the cafeteria committees um, for the middle school and high school this month, um, discussing some new menu, menu options that we will be serving for breakfast and for lunch and continuing that trend into the next school year. Um, one of the things we 
did receive was a $10,000 grant for our breakfast um, expansion program, which we are going to put here at the middle school. Um, and we, in order to do that, there is one thing that we have to kind of target towards, and that is lowering sugar, lowering sodium, increasing our whole grains and increasing our fruits. So tonight, what I have done for you guys is we already sampled them with the teachers at Teacher and Service, but you guys will be able in your executive session, be able to sample uh, some overnight oats. That's a big trend that's happening now that you can make zucchini bread muffin overnight oats, like all of these different kinds of oats. But for tonight, you guys are going to have a blueberry cobbler oat. If you guys enjoy that, please let me know. And then um, during our cafeteria committee meetings, we'll be sampling them with the students, getting them geared to next year in order for us to receive our whole $10,000 grant. That's one of the things that we got to do is increase you know, our fruits and, and whole grains and decrease that sodium and the sugar intake content. And by doing so, overnight, it was a big part in there. I know. Um, at the end of this month, um, Earth Day on, on <clears throat> April 22nd, we'll be serving dirt cups. And then on the 26th of April, we will be doing a deli bar where we have an empty way. And we'll be serving that on the line where the kids can choose and the ladies will stack their their hoagies or their flatbreads or their wraps, however they want, and then we'll just talk about like all of the toppings that we want. So that's all we have for the month of April. Okay. Hey, maintenance supervisor. I have nothing outside the agenda. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chastel, did you have a presentation or something? Or just here because you're probably um, He'll be talking in executive session. Oh, okay. okay. So that means we need an executive session right now, then? Yes. Thank you. So be it resolved, the Board of Education will enter an executive session at uh, 6, 627 p.m. I will make a motion for that. This, this is to uh, discuss litigation, contract students, and personnel. I made the motion. Here with Mr. Gary Kermanoffer. Thanks for your comments. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Gary. Back whenever we can, guys. Yeah. Oh. Oh. 
Okay, we'll resume the meeting of April 2nd, 2024, Committee of the Hall at 7.33 p.m. We'll go right into the buildings and grounds. Okay, the first item is the meet. Oh, I'm sorry, A, site logic update. Next. All right, um, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay, thank you. There we go, that's it. All right, uh, we'll start with an update on this site work in phase one for the classroom addition. We continued constructing the building pad, continued the installation of the sanitarium storm utilities, continued excavating at the rear parking lot area, continued site work associated with the kindergarten playground area. The concrete footers were poured in preparation for the masonry retaining wall and sidewalk. And Penelec was on site on the 26th and began the tree work associated with the or required for the electrical service relocation. They also marked the location for the new utility poles and, and the guy wires. Um, so is it really guy wires? It is. Guy, it it's is not guy nope, wires. Nope. It it's is guy yes, like a that, guy is going yep, to travel on. This. That's it. Okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> on the guy. And then here some photos on the left. That's the kindergarten playground area. That's the footers for the retaining wall. The sidewalk will be um, on the right hand side of that photo. Top right's the tree work being performed. And the bottom right is the uh, building pad. So, phase two the area D renovations uh, completed all of the in wall mechanical, electrical, and plumbing rough ins and sound insulation. Completed the installation of drywall and backer board, continued selective demolition, began drywall finishing, and continued with the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing roughings for new work. Some pictures of that on the left. That's the uh, sound insulation and all of the wall framing. And on the right is just a progress photo of drywall finishing. Phase two, area C. So this is new from the last update. Um, we've started in what's going to become the food and consumer science room. Uh, began demolition of the architectural finishes and mechanical, electrical, and plumbing items in that space. Uh, began saw cutting and excavating the floors for trenches for the new under slab plumbing and uh, grinding the floors in preparation for the new floor finishes. We are hearing you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Photos of that. Uh, that's just that that room demoed, sealing out, flooring, fold up. The schedule overview. So we provided the first schedule update on March 12th. Phase one is showing the final inspections to be completed on April 8th of 2025 with a substantial completion date of July 1st, 2025. So we're quite a bit ahead of schedule in that space, but that's due to the time extension that we received the request for that. Um, caissons have not started yet. The electrical service relocation is not done yet. So we'll continue to track that and update it and um, monitor it accordingly. And then phase two, area D is currently showing three days behind schedule, which in the grand scheme is um, pretty much, we're pretty much on schedule. I believe that is due to scheduled logic, uh, just the way that activities are tied together with successors and our predecessors and successors. Uh, we have another schedule update that will be issued uh, and discussed this coming Monday, the 8th. So I, I plan to correct the schedule logic for that update and. Uh, we'll see where, where it shakes out, but I believe that'll put us on or a little bit ahead of schedule. 
payment application summary, just an update on that. Uh, the district received invoices from the general contractor, uh, plumbing contractor, and electrical contractor this month, did not receive any from the fire protection contractor. Uh, they're not going to have much work on site until the addition begins and the uh, gym is renovated. Just some updates on the challenges. Again, the uh, tree work was performed on 326. An update on the next steps. The easement documents have been completed. Um, we're awaiting an invoice from Panelec. There's nothing else that we can be doing at this point in time. The ball is in their court. As soon as, once they provide that, he did state that um, it can be paid electronically. So if that's something the district can do, it can be handled that day yeah. rather than mailing a check. And um, after that's paid, they said about four weeks, but they have actually, like I mentioned earlier, started working before they've been paid. So that's gonna be helpful. And I think that should speed up the process. I'm hoping that they'll get out here and set the polls. Um, if, you know, even if that gets held up a little bit longer. The holdup has been the invoice. Yeah, from them. From Penelope. Yeah. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. But thankfully, you know, they did, before mm -hmm. getting paid, get on site and, and start They some did stuff. get the tree cut, yes. so that's a good yeah. sign. And then the area D toilet rooms, uh, the change orders associated with that, they're all executed and that work is in progress. Same thing with the area D uh, sanitary line that had negative fall. We looked at that at the last walkthrough. So I'll remove them for the next uh, update. And if there's any other items that come up, we can continue to track and discuss them here. An update on the change management log. Uh, everything down to a item, uh, I guess the last one is blue on the center column. Those were all items we discussed uh, at the last update. Only thing different is that they've been fully executed now that they've been signed. Uh, and then there's a few added at the bottom. And that was just the executed change, no cost change orders for reissuing a revised baseline schedule due to that um, time extension request. Items that uh, we're currently tracking and reviewing, still um, discussing the, the credit that the district would receive from the general contractor for the concrete curb substitution. I want to make sure that whatever they provide would either be of equal or greater quality, and if not, then they're just going to have to install it for the contract documents, what they what they made off of. Uh, the first bulletin, some site revisions that address existing conditions that's going to result in a credit as well we're just trying to negotiate a care credit for the district there um bulletin three e126 door revisions i uh, believe the district wants to install a some type of gate or roll down um, grill in that location so that works deleted from their scope of work we're just looking negotiating the price of uh, the credit they will be providing uh, bulletin six, waiting on uh, pricing from the, the general contractor and plumber for the work in the boys' locker room. Uh, leaving that as a shower room rather than converting it to a storage room. Bulletin eight, uh, the district's going to provide sinks in D107. I'm sorry, um, sink fixtures, and we're going to get a price from the plumber just to install them. And uh, for an RFI, there was a request to, for the general contractor to provide prices for locks for the newly installed lockers. Uh, we have received that, have not had an opportunity to review it in great detail, but we'll be sharing that with the district soon. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, please. Okay, I'm making on item B. Do you want to find this? It was on the Board of Education discussed and authorized the purchase of door hardware for the construction project from hardware specialties of Du Bois. The cost of to the district will be $201,959. There's a security option available as an additional cost of $10,657. That's an attachment number one. It looks like this is dying for lack of motion, so we might as well move on. 
Okay, item C, appraisal. Does Gus having an appraisal done at the high school? Yeah, I'm just wondering, we're talking so much about the high school usage. If we would decide it's valued or to sell it, Toby, so are there steps we have to go through? To sell it, certainly. Yes. So yeah. how how would we start that, or could you guide us through that? Yeah, like we to could, get an appraisal about, to see its value and see what it's worth. Yeah, there are certain legal requirements. Um, but a good step would be to get an appraisal to estimate its value. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's pretty valuable. Okay, so could we just vote on? I'd like to take a vote to get the appraisal, or how did? Put it on to next year. Next meeting, it's in rent. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's enough. There was a motion to. To get an appraisal, and then we would have to find someone. Do you make bids for that, or do you like to just yeah, yeah, yeah. Step one, go on a bid. Okay. Item D: Public auction. Discuss organizing a public auction for cafeteria equipment at the high school, in addition to the bleachers and other materials from the consolidation project, not utilized, desk chairs, etc. Dr. Son. Um, uh, Toby, I'll need your help with this. Um, we will have equipment that we're not bringing down here. We're bringing most of our classroom materials and things such as that, but I'm assuming we need to have some type of auction, public auction for those items. Um, we do have um, a school district that's interested in the bleachers from the middle school. So I would like to have a discussion with the board members as to how you would like to proceed with that. A couple of options. Uh, Attorney Toby looked into whether or not we would have to bid these. Could we donate them to the school? Um, the benefit to us is that this school will remove them. We will not have to pay Fiori to remove them, so we will get a credit. We don't have to store them, so that will also be a credit. So I guess um, what would the what pleases the board as to what we do with these bleachers? We have someone that's interested. you talk to the Elton School, and yeah. they are interested. They are very interested, and. Um, Dave, they spoke with you a couple of times, so they're working on a plan okay. to come and do that. Um, I don't know what amount. If we sell them to them, thousand dollars, we could donate them. What else, what does the board want to do? The big benefit seems to be that they will come, right? Take, take them out, disassemble them, remove them. You don't have to pay to do that. Right. You don't have to pay for storage. And it'll, Dave, it'll fit in with the uh, timeline. Yeah, 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 we have some time. Just want to do the right procedure, that's all. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah, right. Otherwise, they're just thrown in the garbage. Yes. So, so and it's the Altoona, the Blair County Christian School. How are we going to afford all of the new desks and things that are not in the building contract? We are using the old ones. Okay, but this is saying desks and things. So how much? There might be a desk that's broken that we sell. Uh, desks that aren't being used now, we would sell them. But the majority of our desks are coming down. Okay, because when I see this. Yeah. Okay, four members. Are you guys okay with putting an offer vote just to donate them if they come pick them up? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. a Thank you. Okay, item E, shale and gravel. Discuss the donation of shale for the uh, school football stadium walkway by Mr. Mark Stoltz. Mr. Messina. Well, kind of with the board approval, I just want to sit down and meet with Mark to come up with a, a, a game plan of some sort. Um, there is reasonings. I know he sat at the meeting, he said about the walkway. The reason why we put that gravel in that walkway um, was for a couple of different reasons. That compacts down 
the minute we get a smaller shell, you're going to have that all through the grass, all through the field. So I just, if you guys are okay, I've sat down with Mark, maybe it's a walkway into the bleachers or something else, to, just to see what their thoughts are. Too. Did we approve this last year? No, we didn't. No, it just no, he came in and he spoke about it and he said that if we would decide to use it, that he would look yeah, for funding. Vote, I, don't see why do that. I think that would be a good idea. Okay, item F. Bleacher board replacement. Describe the replacement of the bleacher boards at the football stadium. Didn't see that. Uh, just a little like we typically do. Uh, we have to go down and mark boards that are bad. Can we put that in the paper for a bit? Are we using the grant money that we applied for? I have not heard anything about the grant. Nothing. Nothing. So we have like zero so far. No, we put up fifty grand. Yeah, but that's yeah. but that's to match only if we receive. The grant, so I have not heard that we received the grant. Can we check on that, please? Maybe this take a phone call. I'm going to guess this is probably an insurance problem if we don't, liability problem if we don't. We do this every year, yeah. And I'm just thinking where the money extra money can come from. That's all I know. We applied for a grant, it was 50,000, and it was a pretty short thing that we would receive it. That do I, do I don't know that it was a short thing, unfortunately, but. I think we would have heard by now. That's my concern. But I will check. That's it. Okay, business and finance. A, CSIU software purchase. Discuss the CSIU software purchase renew renewals for the 2024-2025 school year. Uh, yes, he left me with some information. So this is the software that we use for all of our finances. Specifically, we're looking at the fund accounting, uh, human resources, payroll. And those are all those are all different amounts. Is this all for administration? Yes. This what is, is for the way? whole district. Okay. What is the cost, please? The fund accounting is $2,200 annual. Human resources is $1,975. Payroll is $2,200. So why is the cost not on oh, Well, whenever we go to a... When we go okay. to a vote, I will put this okay. on. Is this all the same company? Is it yes, all this is through CSIU. And there was an attachment. Yeah. Did you see? Okay. Okay. 2024-2025 preliminary budget. Discuss the upcoming 24-25 preliminary budget. We have a meeting. Yeah. We do have a meeting scheduled. I guess are we that should probably be in public meeting. The public for the budget? Okay. Usually is. I think we discuss the budget. Right? Depends who's all involved. But right. If you have, we want it to be public. I well, if you have more than two board members present, and it's going to be right. You just have a uh, budget workshop. Yeah. Advertise it. And has any decision been made on taxes yet? Or tax increases for the upcoming school year? The one said none. Last time, last meeting, I never said it's a possibility. Yes. Who wants to hurt it? He said it's doable, but it doesn't have to be. Oh, I'm sure that will be discussed at that meeting. So. Okay. We'll just move on. <clears throat> What's the date and time? Um, April 12th at 9 a.m. And location? Boardroom. I'm sorry, what did you say? I couldn't hear you. April 12th at 9 a.m. Boardroom. Thank you. And Karen, can you get that in the paper tomorrow? <clears throat> yes, thank you.
Be resolved, the Board of Education discuss and approves the NLEO bill for the website subscription beginning May 6, 2024 through May 5, 2025. The cost of the district is $9,510. I'll make a motion. Mr. Mike Basel. Questions or comments? Yeah, I looked at the attachment and it doesn't say specifically what all runs and all I mean. I just told us that it's just our website. I'm leaving the web page. Um, I'm assuming it does not run the Sapphire because we had other programs to do that. It does not run Sapphire, but the web page software allows us to link that all together. It also runs the teacher pages, um, links to email, links to email for board members, if the public wants to do that. Um, Did they include so many hours a month or something before war? We had training the first year. That was so many hours a month training. Oh, okay. And this that, is only the second year we had it? I think this is going into the third, this will be the third year. Anyone else? Okay, roll call. Mrs. Hoover? Yeah. Dr. Krug? Yes. Mrs. Krug? No. Mr. Krumenacher? No. Mrs. Krumenacher? Yes. Mrs. Lee? Yeah. Mr. Show is absent. Mr. Basil? Yes. Ms. Inchop. Yes. <clears throat> Motion carries. Admiral Perry Area VOTEC Budget. Discuss the Admiral Perry Area Admiral Perry VOTEC 2024 2025 budget presented for, for board, board approval. The cost per student for the 2024 25 school year is $6,029. There's the and I do have an update. Uh, the actual cost is $5,911.22. And last year, the cost was $5,913.21. So it's down a couple dollars from the previous year. Does it go down the more students we send? More students overall. Okay. So as their numbers increase, the cost for each district will decrease. Okay. And our number is what, around 71? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Is that up or down? You know? Yeah, pretty much cost. I think it was 70. It's a bad software, and it's all more than about by one. Okay. Spending limit. Discuss the $100 limit from the school code, Mr. Basil. Yeah, I just was. Curious whether or not, um, I know we had kind of picked a, an amount that was somewhat arbitrary, but probably high enough that there's maybe no impact. I was curious whether there's any impact on administration for approval of invoice and also more, if you had a chance to look at what I had sent you, I, I know it was kind of in between over the last month or so, well, got a little bit going on. Um, whether or not you had a chance to look at that and any update, whether or not the way we used to do business, whether or not we are able to, you know, either consider that again, or whether or not, again, this is more of a question for Laura too, is the $2,000 limit, are you noticing any impact just from a, a delay of approvals that would typically go through, or is it, do you feel that dollar amount is sufficient? At this point in time, it's been sufficient. I'm concerned though, when we start ordering over the summer. So we may need to revisit this when we're doing all of our orders, uh, over the summer, it may hinder some things, but we can okay. revisit it. Okay. So yeah, at this point, then maybe if, if there's no reason to put it right back on the agenda. Let's more would have something she finds probably that would, in essence, change or. Well, I get like if we go to the budget workshop, I can talk to Laura or whatever there okay. and okay. see what the what we decide. We can look and see. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah, we have like I said. Looking at the last few months, there's not much, not much going on. But in the summer, I mean, you have a lot of time. Right, right, right. So there's lots going on. Anything else, Bob? 
That's it. Okay, community relations. Uh, item A, library donation. Discuss the donation of the library. It's from my memory. We've done this every year. I'm not sure what the amount is right now. 4000 Same as all. It's been that since I can remember. So. Anybody have any comments there? No, just that um, there's a fund that matches what we do. Yeah. yeah. That's if we donate to one place, that's the one I would do. Pastor Marty's been in front of that forever. So uh, that's all I have to say. Curriculum instruction. Home bound instruction be resolved the Board of Education retroactively attempts home bound instruction for a student kindergarten for nine weeks as discussed in executive session. I'll make a motion for that. Motion by Mrs. Crew. Second by Mrs. Crow Weed. Questions or comments on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Oh, the plan force study. Thought it was done. Sorry. Discuss the changes made to the plan force study for the high school beginning the 24 25 school year, and that is in attachment five. Um, and I actually had a meeting this afternoon with curriculum. And I think they're pretty um, pretty ready for everything. The, the course of study, the pro, uh, everything is completed. It seems they've done some hard work there. And we have a, a, an AP biology course to offer and a few other things. Uh, Dr. Kostani, do you want to add anything? No, I think, um, thank you for coming and reviewing that with Mrs. Prebish. We appreciate that input. And um, I know she's been a big pushener and she's been working really hard uh, in the curriculum and the uh, scheduling, it's, it, it's improving every year that I've been here. So we have it just about where we want it, I think. So we're pretty excited about that. And then the textbook adoption cited that um, Mrs. Chunko is adding the AP biology course. So we thank her for stepping up to do that. And uh, so there will be a cost associated with that with the, with the textbook, but it's a great offering for our students. Okay. And I haven't seen the textbook, but they have access to it. And also, um, I guess, is it the textbook that is tied into the AP courses? I imagine it's, it, are there a couple recommended, or is this the only recommended version? No, I'm sure there's a, more than one recommended. This is the one, I think, when she talked with other teachers in the area. This was the one. Version. This is the one with the right. And I did share a link. I meant to ask you that. Straight. Yeah, I did share a link that showed some of it. And as soon as the books come in, most definitely we'll share that with you. And anyone else that would like to right. review it, we'll have it available. Okay. You're copying the sample books? Yes. Were, were these ordered already? No. Okay. This, but they will offer us free samples then? Yes. All right. Thank you. Oh, one more. D, special education plan. Discuss and review the special education plan as presented in attachment seven. Um, and that was done by Mr. Trisello. We discussed some of that in executive session, which I can't remember. And that will be posted for 30 days, and then I'll bring that to the board for a vote. That's good. That's all I have. Thank you. Legislation of policy development, nothing at this time. Personnel. I am a maintenance supervisor contract. Two years old, the Board of Education discussed and approved the contract offered to maintenance supervisor. This agreement runs until April 10, 2024, through April 9, 2027. I'll make a request to Mr. Gerard for our seminar. I'm going to say, Mr. Mark from our office. your comments. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Mike, you said you're opposed? Yeah. Okay. Seven. Seven to one, Karen. Right. Motion carries. Item B. DC IP teacher. Here's all the Board of Education discussed and hired. Mark Marino has the DC IP teacher on step one. At a salary of 36000 beginning April 3rd, 2024, as a temporary professional employee. Can you make a motion? Motion by Mrs. Krug, second by Mrs. Zenshaw. 
questions or comments? I have one comment. Um, um, it's going to be prorated from that day, right? Yes. Okay. He's already receiving that. Yeah, but he's receiving his long term sub, so Correct. this is going to be prorated from now on. But technically, it's prorated. Yes. Okay. And also, if I can add, um, BCIT is still part of our curriculum requirements. Uh, um, anyone else? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I don't see. I'm very teacher. Here's all the board education discussed and point. I'm doing your as the mentor teacher for $320. Who's the mentor teacher? For, for Kylie Dillon. As mandated by the CDD. That will run for one year. So we'll run it part of next school year as well. But the price of stipend will be code. And it's only 320? It is. Yeah. Okay. It's only 10 hours. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm okay. All right. This is, uh, this is Jerry. Did you make a motion? Yeah. Okay, since it's your, we'll go motion by Jerry Kermanoffer. Second one, Mrs. Norman Krug. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Tara Watson and Monica Phillips. Yes, so uh, we'll put that on as a. Um, do we normally put that on as a vote, Karen, for the what? substitutes? Yes. Okay. So we'll we'll add that for a vote for the next meeting. What were the two names again, please? Tara Watson okay. and Monica Phillips. Okay. Is this through tonight or is this ours? These are ours. And these are just substitutes at this time. I mean, uh, I believe extension discuss the trust of employee 2601 who return date is scheduled for April 23rd, 2024 to extend her sabbatical leave for the remainder of the school. Uh, uh, we'll put this on for a vote. I shared with you an executive session, the employee and information. Hey, Matt. Summer maintenance workers discuss hiring two two summer maintenance workers this summer beginning on the end of the twenty four through the end of all the twenty twenty four. This was here. Usually summertime help. We usually um, hire either high school kids or we put it out into the paper. The summertime. Do you check for high school kids first? What's that? Do you guys check for high school kids first? We advertise it through the cold news of the high school, yes. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, I just have one thing that should have went under there. Uh, just for an informational item, and because we have to announce this, we have been discussing the renewal of the superintendent contract. Okay. All right, staff development. Item A, Pennsylvania Music Educators Association Conference, PMEO. Be it resolved, the Board of Education approves a request from Allison Pattison to attend HEMA conference on April 18th through the 20th, 2024, in Erie, PA, as a chaperone. The cost of the district will be $365. I'll make the motion. Motion for Mr. Denshaw. And one second. Mr. Daniel Hoover. Question for Palmer? Yeah, you may have passed. Um, so, I, because if we approve this, um, she's in Erie for three days, and we approved the last teacher for this amount. Are we paying for the hotel? This includes their lodging. This, so this is their they're lodging going as the chaperones. Right. This is going as chaperones, and so that is their lodging is included in that price. So she was able to 
uh, request to become the chaperone as well. Okay, could you explain the difference then between the chaperone that we would approve, or we did approve last time, and the actual conference attendee? The only difference, other than maybe some duties that they will have during the conference, would have been the price. So is she getting less of an experience? She will be because she's going to have to have other duties with chaperoning students. So she won't be able to attend as many sessions. Will she get her credits for? Not as many. Thank you. Okay, we, yes, we also, well, we don't have any students there. No, this is students. chaperoning other students that but, go. But I know that mostly they chaperone their own, and we don't have any students that she's in charge of. <clears throat> I can I ask a question. I, the last time we had both of these ladies on back to back, and we voted to not send the first participant, and that was over a thousand dollars. And then we voted to send the second participant at three hundred and sixty-five dollars. So I'm wondering, is she going for a a decrease rate? Compared to what we originally voted on, because I think the first, is that what you're saying? Yes, she's going for a decreased rate, but will have other responsibilities. She can't just attend all of the sessions she's that she wants. Attend the session she's not correct. Correct. And she's not chaperoning. Right. Correct. So they bring students to do music performances at the music conferences. And so across the state, they bring, and so she would be charged with chaperoning those students at night. Their, their teacher might not be able to stay overnight at the conference. So then they hire oh. or pay these others to chaperone the students at night or during the day or making sure they're getting to the performances they need to get. So she's going to get some experience, but she won't be getting her PDE credits or whatever. She'll be getting some, but probably not as many as if she was just going mm -hmm. as not a chaperone. Um, so you said at night, do they have conferences at night that she's chaperoning in the evening? So she'll be chaperoning. The kids are there all day. Right. So sometimes I've seen them perform at lunch. Sometimes I've seen them perform in the evening at banquets. So I would say, yes, she has duties. She'll have duties. All day. But at different she times. have them in the, in the evening. So. Yes. And have them in the evening. Like. They have to make sure they get up and they get to breakfast and they get to, yeah. So that doesn't come into her, that wouldn't cut into her time as far as um, credits? Depends mm -hmm. on what time. If she has to get the kids ready at 5 o'clock, you know, they do have some sessions up till 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, so she'll be able to go to some sessions, definitely. Will she be able to go to as many as if she wasn't a chaperone, no. But she'll still be able to get some experience. Mr. Dodd, did you have a question? No, no. Yeah. Uh, typically, when students when students are sent from a school or it's actually they earn to go there, their teachers accommodate them because they have to. So the other school, all the school districts who are there, have their teachers, their chaperones along the way. With them. We just can, I guess, coincidentally, don't have any students. Well, actually, PMEA does it a little bit differently because when our students went um, and stayed overnight at districts, they actually have other teachers that stay overnight in the hotels. Not all of the teachers stay overnight in the hotel. I don't believe Fred stayed overnight in the hotel. So they were there during that time. So they have designated other chaperones for other students. Because I don't know why they would offer her the discount if she didn't have any other duties. Okay, hey, uh, we'll do a roll call. <clears throat> Mrs. Krug? Yes. Mr. Krumenacher? Oh, uh, no. Mrs. Krumenacher? Yes. Mrs. Lieb? Yes. Mr. Shell's absent. Mr. Basil? Yes. Ms. Zinshaw? Yes. Mrs. Hoover? Yes. Dr. Crook? Yes. Motion carries. Nothing further.
See next page. Price right, A, fundraiser calendar B, result of board education through the following edition of the fundraiser calendar, academic adventures, club health and toy of Jeff Chunko, Hunt of Almond B6, Dirty and Dips. I'll second it myself. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Transportation. <laughs> I made bus driver approval. Discuss the approval of the following bus drivers Michael Bjorman, Jennifer Goss. Uh, can we add the name Thomas Woods? And Thomas Woods. And Karen, was there another one? No. no. Not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. But just that, just one this time. Mm -hmm. No, we can, this do we want to vote on these as a group or do we want to vote on them individually? No, it's not a for vote. Oh, yeah. Do you want me to put them as a group or separately? That is a valid question. Let's, uh, let's separate. Okay. <clears throat> That's all. Athletics, Mr. Shell. Out of me, annual stipend to Northern County Recreation Committee. Discuss in addition to the lease agreement of payment, the Board of Education discuss the payment to the Northern County Recreation Committee of five thousand dollars to help defray the cost of updates made to the baseball softball fields above and beyond regular maintenance. I can speak to that. Go ahead, yes. Uh, so per our contract that we have with the Northern County Recreation Committee, uh, the, the five thousand dollars um, was the charge, and uh. They're asking, you know, they're always going to ask us for an additional type of donation. Um, and I know recently they put out asking for community help and involvement to help do maintenance and tear down the old field. And so this five thousand uh, dollars is what we had mentioned in the contract. And I know Ms. Michelle once wanted us to talk about this so that it wouldn't get lost in the shuffle. Um, and so make sure that they got paid timely as well. Okay. Yeah, I, um, you know, while I'm in support of obviously trying to help the, the, the rec committee out, I know they do a lot. It's, it seemed like, a, I don't know, if it's in there, if maybe it's in the contract, I didn't realize that would be in there. The, the one thing I want to throw is I, I know we saw a recent thing, and I don't think it was forced to, I can't recall it's school, but um, I know it was either financially, it was like help or, um, you know, coordination of us assisting with, you know, Somehow, committee resources. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be feasible in the future to consider, at least I think it would be a good idea, is I know how hard it is trying to recruit individuals to come down during a personal time to uh, do work. And again, I have no idea how this would work, but down the road, could we somehow coordinate the teams to these kids are looking for um, sometimes volunteer hours based on whether they're doing. Uh, you know. so, so to speak for what you're yeah. saying, um, I drove through Tyrone last week. Um, we had Tyrone, a whole class of students were in their community park and they were cleaning up and picking up leaves and they were prepping the area for spring and for community use. Um, so yeah. So I mean, Why again, we have a team playing there, maybe yeah. somehow coordinate with the team and that would be a way to, uh, again, provide support for them and also kind of meet our obligation. Um, so that's that's something I want to add. My comment is just that we're not obligated to pay this five thousand dollars because this isn't part of our contract. Right, that's all. Item B: Football helmets. Discuss the purchase of thirteen football helmets in the amount of five thousand three hundred twenty dollars and forty five cents for the 2024-25 football season. That's as per cash. Have a question. Yes, go um, So I'm looking over the quote, and it's as of March 1st, and it's good for 30 days. So are we? Sh do we think there will be an increase in this quote from when we received it? Usually they're pretty good about giving us a little extra time because they know that we need to get things. Jen, who's the quote from? Uh, right on, right on. Okay, but I meant what company? We're buying a straight from uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, we are. Also, 
it's what we're going on. All right, item C, softball field. Discuss improvements to the softball field. Mrs. Hoover had a comment on that, I'm guessing. Oh, we all wanted to know what the next plan for the softball field was because we were going to um, improve it so that it would be used for the kids and it would be good to have an extra field for the junior high and back. I, I spoke with Mr. Pajak today. He did recommend the breakaway bases. Uh, he said until then uh, that we could use movable bases uh, at that point. And I know John mentioned that there was a little bit of grooming or something you needed to do to the field a little bit. Yeah. Okay. What will you what will you use for a bathroom? He'll use the school. How about lost softballs? And the safety issues for the people working in the construction site and the noise. What well, we do about all that? I they'll have to let us know how it goes and if it's a problem then we can we can adjust. Well, it was a problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's because it's practice. Oh, you're not, you don't have to board anymore. Okay. It's, the superintendent's talking. I think it's because it's practice, not a game. That's why. But the safety issues are still there. Go I ahead. have a question. Yes. Has our administration found the building permit for that yet? No. It it's, doesn't exist. It's still lost? It does exist. It does not. According to Laurel Inspection, it does not exist. Carol, uh, Mr. Toby, did I show you a canceled check to the COG yes. for a purchase of a building permit? Yes. Yes, I did. And that was written from your personal checkbook? It so, was written from my business checkbook, donated to the school to save costs on building that softball field. And if you ask Mr. Peronish, he will admit that he, we were down there, him and me and Mr. Roberts. He Robert. said he saw you buy something, but Laurel Municipal Inspection was oh not have something. Oh my gosh. So that's the truth. I'm sorry. What <laughs> a joke. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I also Go ahead. talked to Mr. Peronish, and he was present with Dr. Cruz, and he did say that it was for the permit. Not just buy something, he said it was okay. for the permit. I talked to him too. That's fine. The permits are on file. They, okay. were, they were brought from the COG. They okay, we're going to adjourn. Be resolved the committee of the home meeting of the Northern County School Board for April 2nd, 2023. Be adjourned at 8 21 p.m. I will make the motion. Motion on Mrs. Crook. Second Mrs. Crook. By me, Mrs. Crook. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are done.